You know, I'm not gonna lie. I was really hoping that someone was gonna ask me this question because now I get to talk about one of my favorite prehistoric animals of all time, Dinotherium. Welcome back to Paleopedia, and Dinotherium is an extinct group of large proboscidean that lived from around 15 million years ago to about 1 million years ago in Africa and Asia. Currently, there are three recognized species of Dinotherium, and all of them are very large, averaging between 3.5 to 4 meters in height at the shoulder and weighing up to around 13 tons, making them noticeably larger than their African elephant cousins. And outside of some key anatomical differences that are pretty obvious, Dinotherium is believed to have lived a life similar to its elephant cousins, being an overall browsing animal that, at least for the females, probably lived in herds. But there are some pretty key differences between Dinotherium and its elephantine cousins in several different ways. Of course, the most notable difference between Dinotherium and the other members of the Proboscideans is the positioning of its tusks. Unlike its close relatives in the elephant family, the tusks of Dinotherium are from the lower incisors and jut downwards and back towards the chest. What is interesting about that though is it's not the tusks themselves that create that overall positioning. It's actually the lower mandible in general as the tusks only erupt at the very end of the mandible. So the whole lower jaw eventually curves downward and back towards their chest with the tusks just erupting afterwards. Due to the positioning of these tusks, it's generally assumed that these weren't used in digging or fighting like modern elephants use them for. Rather, they were probably used for foraging purposes. This coincides with the neck of Dinotherium itself. Compared to other elephants, the neck is longer and more flexible, indicating that Dinotherium specifically fed on leaves high up in trees, using its tusks to potentially strip away branches. The teeth are also quite different from other proboscidean families, indicating that Dinotherium branched off from its relatives pretty early on in proboscidean evolution. Specifically, it seems as though Dinotherium evolved to strictly feed on leaves high up in branches, basically being a browser in a similar niche to giraffes, just with an elephantine body. This is also backed up by the overall structure of the legs. While being very pillar-like like other elephants, they're proportionally longer, indicating that Dinotherium was very efficient at crossing long distances, probably going from patches of forest around open grasslands. This probably led to its very widespread area, ranging from Southern Africa all the way up into Europe and over into East Asia. Like other proboscideans, Dinotherium definitely had had a trunk, although the overall size and length of the trunk is still up for debate. Some scientists believe that the trunk was long and flexible similar to modern elephants, while others think that it was probably thicker, shorter, and more muscular, although it was probably long enough for the animal to drink without having to assume some weird posture. These anatomical features all lead to the idea that Dinotherium was a far-ranging animal throughout its overall habitat traversing across long distances relatively easily due to its longer limbs. Although this did come with a risk that eventually led to the extinction of Dinotherium overall, being an animal that specifically fed on leaves across long distances due to the continued aridification of the planet throughout the Miocene towards the Pleistocene, Dinotherium eventually ran out of food, especially in its Europe and Asian ranges, only surviving in southern Africa up until about a million years ago. Although it survived up through the early form of hominids, our ancestors, meaning that the first steps of humanity were alongside giant elephant-like animals, while elephants themselves hadn't yet appeared on the scene. Which, on a personal level, I think that's a really cool little fact about human evolution, but uh, let's continue on. Throughout its evolution, Dinotherium really didn't change all that much morphologically. Rather, it just got bigger really quickly. The ancestors of Dinotherium, Prodinotherium, were around 2 meters high at the shoulder, so still pretty large, but Dinotherium was 
double that at the shoulder and significantly heavier. And this is likely attributed mainly to its foraging, its lifestyle, but also coincides with a couple other things. Mainly it coincides with the overall cooling of the planet. A larger body size allows you to retain heat with less energy use, but also it lines up with a wide diversification of predators. Throughout the Miocene, carnivorans in particular saw a large diversity increase, with several species getting very, very large, including members of the hyenodonts, amphicyonids, and larger cats like the saber-tooths. And as I've discussed many times throughout my time here with this show, having a larger body is a great deterrent from predators coming after you. So a wide range of larger predators along with an overall cooling planet and a body structure that allowed for greater distances in cooler environments, Dinotherium, without having to change its overall shape, just got bigger to compensate. For me, Dinotherium is just a great indicator of how several groups of animals that today are only represented by a couple species were historically much more diverse than we ever could have thought of. Proboscideans appear in the fossil record pretty quickly after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs, with the oldest species being around 60 million years old, and up until about 20 million years ago, they were relatively unremarkable, generally being pig or hippo-like animals that probably lived around swamp edges. But when Africa collided with Eurasia around 20 million years ago, the proboscideans took that opportunity and ran with it, becoming large, widespread, and very diverse, with eight known families since that initial radiation. And the Dinotheres were one of the earlier groups to separate from other proboscideans and were one of the first ones to become really, really huge, bigger than modern elephants today. I really want to make a video about the evolution of elephants and the proboscideans, and I do plan on doing that sometime this winter, but for now, I don't really have a great way to end this video, I just really like Dinotherium, and I'm glad that I was able to talk about it.